In this video, I'm going to show how to create and populate an object based on a swing form we've been creating. It's actually fairly straightforward. I'll right click on the Save button and say Create Listener and say Action Listener, which means this is what happens when the button is pressed. That's going to go back to my controller, uh, the Java class that essentially supports this form, and it creates a constructor. And then inside of that, it has this action perform method, which means we have clicked the button. So at this point, we can gather the data that the user has entered into our JText field. And remember how important it is uh, to name those text fields meaningful descriptive names so we know what we're getting. We'll invoke get text on each of these text fields and then simply uh, save it in a local variable. So for txt odometer, obviously that would be odometer. Now for a quick proof of concept, I've started this in the debugger, and I add a, added a breakpoint on line 24. So let's say odometer 10,000 miles per gallon, let's say 15 gallons of gas, let's say 10. Then when I hit save, it will trigger that breakpoint, and we can just verify that we are indeed populating odometer miles per gallon and gallons of gas with data from that form. So a couple more things we're going to need to do. Uh, we're getting it as a string because that's what we get from a JTEX field. We'll, we will need to parse those to the proper number type, either int or double. And we also need to create a vehicle. But there's a bit that we can reuse on the vehicle. Remember in this class called driver, we have a factory method called create vehicle. And really we should refactor this and just pop this into its own class. But for the moment, we'll use this. The only trick is we need to pass in a selected vehicle, and we have some constants here that define what the possibilities are for that vehicle. Okay, so back to our form now. Let's take this one step at a time. The first thing that we want to do is populate this dropdown with the different vehicle types that the user can create. So you see right now the dropdown is empty. Uh, this will take just a couple of steps, but we can do it right here in this constructor, or we could, uh, you know, let's say, let's make another method. Let's say initialize combo. Alt enter, create that method. So first of all, we have to have something called a, a default combo box model. Remember model view controller. So model is talking about the data that we want to represent. So we're creating a quick and dirty model that we're going to throw right into that combo box and say, okay, uh, this is what I want you to draw for the user. Well, part of data type, to keep this one simple, we'll use string, which often is not a good idea, but it's actually going to work for us here. Now that we have that model defined, we can start adding the different vehicle types to it. with simple add element. Now, you notice I type sonic as a string. Err, I'm kind of cringing because that's not a good idea because we really should use constants for this. And as a matter of fact, we already have constants defined. If we take a look at driver, we see there's this public final string sonic. That would be a better choice. We can't necessarily use it as is, though we might need to make just a subtle adjustment. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. So it kind of figured something out for me there. It just created an instance of driver and invoked sonic. I didn't know, I'll say, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, another way to handle this is to make all of these static. Remember, static means that we do not need an object reference if we're going to refer to these. So it kind of actually makes a little more sense here because you see what that uh, get instance was doing was creating an object reference. And we're saying, okay, let's just make it static so we don't even need that object reference. And there we go. Let's go ahead and fill that out for the other uh, vehicle types we have. Excellent. I feel much better now that we're using those constants. Less chance for a typo better maintenance if we happen to change one of these models. Now, let's grab that combo box. I don't remember the name of it. Okay, CMB make model. Okay. And we'll say set model. Now, we want to know which one the user picked. So, back in our action perform button handler, we'll say CMB make model dot get selected item. Now, this is a bit of a tricky situation. Get selected item wants to return java.lang.object. And remember, java.lang.object is the grand superclass of all classes in Java. So if we want something else, we would have to cast it down to that more specific type. But on the same note, we just put a string in here, right? 
There's actually an easy way to get a string out of this without casting. That's just by invoking the toString method. And now let's put this in a local variable called type. I've started the debugger. So we have Sonic, we'll say odometer 10,000, miles per gallon 15, gallons of gas 10. And now let's choose save and step through. We've already seen the lines up above, so we should have confidence that we're going to get the correct odometer, miles per gallon, and gallons of gas. Now type, ah, oh, look at that, we got Sonic. So at this point, I'm comfortable we have everything we need to create a simple vehicle. And we can use that factory method on driver to wrap this up. Remember that we set up driver as a singleton with a get instance method. So we can simply invoke that get instance. We know there's only going to be one object of driver at any time, and we're simply asking for that object, maximum one. There could be zero if this is never called. But assuming this is called at some point, we'll have at least one. Now we have a create vehicle method, which is our factory method, and we have to pass in some representation of the vehicle we want to create, which is in that type variable. Alt enter, introduce local variable. There's our vehicle. Now we can invoke the setter methods for odometer miles per gallon and gallons of gas with one caveat. We also know that we have those data as strings right now and we need to convert them to the proper type. We could store it into a variable. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but I do want to make a difference because we're going to have variables with similar names. So I'll, I'll preface each of these with str so that we know the difference between the string and the proper number type. I convert odometer to an int as it should be. Do the same with miles per gallon. And then gallons of gas will convert to a double. And now we have our vehicle we can populate. Give it one more run in the debugger. So Sonic, we'll keep that. Odometer 10,000, miles per gallon 15, gallons of gas 10. Save will take us into the debugger. Uh, we see we're going to get the text stored in a string convert that to our uh, odometer, 10,000, that looks good. Get our miles per gallon of 15, convert that to an int. Get our gallons of gas of 10, convert that to a double. Uh, now we get the type that was selected from that combo box, which in this case was a sonic. Now here's the interesting part. We're going to call our singleton method and then our factory method. Let me try a step into on both of these. Oh, that's neat. Let's me pick. All right, sure, let's go to our uh, singleton method. So uh, driver's not yet been created. It creates that object and stores the one and on only object that will be created. Let's go ahead and step in one more time. Now we're in the factory method, which I made in a previous video. So we see the selected vehicle is Sonic, and we know that we got that directly from this constant up here. So uh, the factory method should recognize it no problem. So is the selected vehicle Sonic? Yes, it is. It creates an object type of Sonic, and it returns this object type of Sonic. We see that uh, using dependency inversion, our driver form only knows it as a vehicle, but when we look in the debugger, we see that sure enough, under the covers, the object actually is Sonic. At this point, we've actually done a lot, haven't we? We've created a, an action listener for our button, which will operate when the button's clicked. We have populated this combo box, so this dropdown. Then we've seen how to grab data from this form when we click the button and use that to create and populate an object. So that's quite a bit. In our next video, we'll see how to take uh, these objects, we'll create multiple of them, and put them into a J list. And then we'll see how to enter a number in here like 100 and drive each vehicle that quantity and then watch that J list update. So as always, I hope that you found this video helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.